and Boyd Pantiera Family Funeral Care. Mark is an accomplished business owner, community leader, executive, and entrepreneur, applying his personal formula for professional successes Mark has distinguished himself as an advisor to a diversified group of clients in a variety of industries. As the CEO and partner of the Pacific Institute, Mark focuses his efforts on driving the growth and performance of organizations, teams, and individuals working with Fortune 1000 companies, government agencies, healthcare systems, educational institutions, athletic teams, and nonprofit organizations. Wow. Mark is also very proud of his funeral service tradition as the owner of Boy Pantera Funeral Family Funeral Homes, led by his wife Tiffany and son Mark Anthony, the fourth generation caregiver in the business. A well recognized TED talk presenter, Mark and speaker and author, Mark is frequently asked to share his insights and experience. He has appeared on ABC's Wall Street Journal Report, CNBC, and CBC. Additionally, he is a trusted media resource and has been quoted in Forbes, The New York Times, The Miami Herald, and Fort Lauderdale Sun Sentinel. Mark is married to Tiffany and has three children, Diana, Donna, and Mark. Please join me in welcoming Mark Pants here. Thanks for going through that pain with me. Most importantly, I was the 2000 president of FFDA. I'm so proud to be back. Thank you for welcoming me home. We're going to begin this morning with a test. Did you get the memo? What I'm going to ask you to do first is read the sentence I'm going to put on the screen one time through and do your best to figure out what it means. Ascertain the meaning of that sentence, please. Then I'm gonna blank the screen, I'm gonna ask you for the meaning of this sentence. Here we go. The meaning of the sentence. Okay, thoughts, meaning of the sentence, and everyone's included. Hey, what does that sentence mean? Let's yell it out from the back of the hall. Elvis is in the house. Meaning of the sentence. Thoughts, loud? Okay, it's, um, do we, yeah, do we have a handheld in the house by chance? So we can, so we can chat it up amongst ourselves? Just repeat, okay. It was a little bit clunky. It was a little, yeah, I was just saying, the, the way it appeared to be saying is when you finish with something, it's, you, you complete it and it's based, your completion of it is based on, uh, get your background and any type of studying that you've done. Okay, good thought, thank you. Others, meaning of the sentence. Yell it out, You're meaning. An expert by the time you finish a file. Beautiful, thank you, Robin. An expert, you are an expert by the time you finish the file. Another meaning of the sentence, please. Thoughts. Hard work and experience lead to conclusions. Wendy, hard work and experience lead to conclusions. Beautiful. Good job. Good job. That's why she's in charge. You're the boss, applesauce. <laughs> Very good. Okay, now the next set of instructions in this test. I'm going to put the same sentence on the screen. This time, instead of focusing on the meaning of the sentence, I'd like you to count the number of letter F's. F is in front. Count the number of letter F's and jot it down. You got a pencil and paper, pen and paper, please. Because I'm going to ask you, number of letter F's. Here we go. Same sentence, count the number of letter F's.
Claire. Number of letter Fs, we're gonna start with two. That gentleman got two Fs. Who else got two Fs? Two, okay, hold on two. We got two in the back? Beautiful, okay, wonderful. Next, who got three Fs? There's one, three, more threes, interesting. Interesting, cool. Four Fs? Okay, thank you for participating, four Fs. Okay, thank you, five? Whoa, were we all reading the same sentence? Six, six Fs, six, six, thank you. Seven, one, two, three, wild. Eight, from two to seven Fs, interesting. The great reveal. There are seven F's in that sentence. If you can't see them now, talk to your neighbor. Otherwise, talk to me afterwards. <laughs> seven F's in that sentence. Let me just tell you, this is not an exercise in IQ. It's not an exercise in sparks. It is an exercise in cognition. How you think about what you're thinking about. You just experienced a scotoma. A scotoma. The word scotoma in Greek means blindness or blind spot. Tiffany, where did I leave my glasses? Please, where did I leave my glasses, my bride? Where did I leave my glasses? Why do these things happen? Well, in the case of that sentence, it's because we were taught to read phonetically. And the F in the word of sounds like a what? A V. V is in vector. So as I'm putting you under a time constraint, you just swiftly pass over it because you want to get the right answer. Okay? Also, what did I do to you? I threw you off. I asked you for the meaning of the sentence. You all had a good reply to that, but it really doesn't mean much of anything. But I threw you off target. Then I'm, ta I'm expressing to you, let's make sure you get the right answer. This is going to be a challenging test. More pressure. Isn't this what you deal with in life every day? How about in your walk as caregiving professionals? So I ask you, how often have you experienced a scotoma and didn't even realize it? It was blocked in plain sight. Something missing right before your eyes. Very much like the clicker was also to me, or almost to me then. So, today we're going to be scotoma busters for one another. But I want to open by talking about when might you have had a scotoma? Now you'll say, pants here, what the heck are you talking about? If you're telling me it's blind to me, how do I know it's a scotoma? How do I know that I'm missing it? Well, as I just mentioned, how many times has this happened to me? Where the heck did I lay my glasses? Where are my car keys? Thank you for the affirmation. I lost my car keys. Scotomas happen all the time when you tell yourself you've lost something, you're missing something, you can't find something. Darn it all, I really make this mistake all the time. You're going to keep serving up to you because you're creating your own blind spot to success. So now, open mic, please. Share with all of us the vulnerability as I've shared my vulnerability with you about your scotomas. Scotoma moments in your life, personally first, then I want to talk about them in your funeral homes, in your cemeteries, in your pre need operations, possibly in your hospice, in your hospice networks, wherever. First and foremost, let's talk about it personally, though. Please, please stand up and shout it out. Where's the TV remote? How many? <laughs> suffer from that. Thank you. Others, please. Where's my phone? Oh, better yet, here, I'm gonna help you with that. <laughs> Wait a second, I just left the restaurant. When I paid, I put my phone down because I had to grab my credit. Let me go back in, let me call you back. Bro, you're on your phone, what are you talking about? You're on your cell, right? In your hand, I see smiles. 
all the time. It happens to me as well, all the time. Others, others, scotoma moments, blind spots, please, loud. Credit cards. Credit cards. Is that what you said? All the time. It's better sometimes we shouldn't find our credit cards, right? Anyway, beautiful. Thank you. Others, scotoma moments. Car keys. Car keys all the time, please. Where did I park my car? Thank hey, gosh, we got the, the, the clicker to make sure over where the heck is it. It beeps back at you right on. Others. One more. Personal. Please. Her homework. <laughs> I think that's a schizophrenia by design. Schizophrenia <laughs> by design. Beautiful. Right on. Now, what I want to do throughout the morning as I'm going to prove to you that mindset matters, I want to keep applying the cognitive sciences because that is, this is a cognitive science concept. It is a concept on how the brain works. I want to keep applying it, though, to your walk in your professional life. So how does this happen in your funeral homes? How does this happen when you're leading your pre sales teams? How does it happen when you are, when you are running your cemeteries? What might you be missing? Eerie silence. You think you have all the answers? Okay, I'm glad that Robin's saying no. Well, let me share with you that when you think you have all the right answers, you absolutely block out possibilities. You build scotomas in your own mind. And that's what happened to me in 2008. 13 years ago, when I was leading our family funeral home, I'm third generation funeral director, pants here, funeral homes, and uh, I thought I had all the answers, man. I had the cars, I had the watches, I had the bling, I was a president's association, things were cool, doing a national thing, private schools for my kids, and just, it just seemed to go in the real, with the right networks, the right churches, uh, hitting the right numbers, sales, buying the right funeral, all of that, shaking your head, right? We experienced that. Man, I got this. It's a walk in the park. This is who I am. I'm doing who I am. God Almighty, what's next? It's too easy. I remember that night so clearly. I brought a, a grief psychologist, performance psychologist into our funeral home to speak at our grief recovery group, Wings of Hope. And he put this geriatric audience through that very finished files exercise that you just experienced. And I'm sitting in the back thinking, man, I got all the answers. Kubler Ross, five stages of grief. Here we go again. And all of a sudden, two Fs, three Fs, four Fs, seven Fs. I got three. I've done that exercise a thousand times. When I look at it quickly, I still only see three. Crazy enough. When he explained this concept to me, I said, what in the hell else am I missing in my life and in my profession? I said, I'm not going to tolerate not taking advantage of my full potential. So I burned the boats. You ever heard of that? Cortez burned the boats because I ain't going back. And I connected with this organizational psychologist after the meeting, and he introduced me to the Pacific Institute. You ever heard of that commercial, I'm Dating Myself, Victor Kayam, um, I believe it's, it was Yon Remington, I, I like the shape so much, I bought the company. <laughs> well, I love this information so much, I bought the company. And now I'm leading it as a CEO. But why? Because I knew I was limiting my outreach as a caregiver to the world. I had a huge heart for, for, for helping the Marine. But how the hell can I, could I blast off, really springboard into breathing life into leaders around the globe? Well, I needed a platform to do that. And so at the Pacific Institute, this is what we do. We give people the tools to really tap into the potential to drive greater personal and professional performance than ever before. Training people that mindset matters, but more importantly, how to change your mindset to tap into your own potential, both personally and professionally, to, to achieve at levels that you never imagined. 
Mindset matters. What the mind of man can conceive and believe, it can achieve. Have you heard of that quote? Lisa, tell me where you heard that quote. Here, please, 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 please. Probably in something like this, and you're probably right, you're right. Others, have you heard of that quote? What the mind of man can conceive and believe it can achieve, it comes in many, many different forms. Many, many different forms. Basically, what you can visualize, Wendy, you're affirming, you're affirming you've heard of that? What you can visualize, what you affirm, you can actually have come true, you can manifest. I'm using wonky, multi-syllabic words, but it, it's about setting a goal. I mean, you hear it in sports all the time, visualization, right? Affirmation. <laughs> Man, uh, uh, in golf, <laughs> water hole, whether for good or for bad, put the ball on the tee, par three, water hole. I'm not gonna get water. I'm not gonna get water. I'm not gonna get water. Open the hips a little bit, slice right into the water. What the mind of man can conceive and believe, I'm thinking water, it can achieve, put it in the water, for good or for bad. So what are you thinking about? Are you thinking about what you think about? These aren't plays on words. This is the, it is the theme of the book written by Napoleon Hill called Think and Grow Rich. Have you heard of that? Think and Grow Rich. It ain't about making money. It's about doing this. Well, back in 1917, a guy named Andrew Carnegie, the distant uncle of Dale Carnegie, but Andrew Carnegie, one of the richest men in America, a steel magnet, magnet from, uh, uh, from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, he wanted to figure out what made successful people successful. And so he commissioned this guy named Napoleon Hill in 1917, and he said, go out and interview the most successful people in America and figure out what makes them tick. So he spoke to Henry Ford, Thomas Edison, President of the United States, in a 20-year study, 1917 to 1937, he published a volume called Think and Grow Rich, and this is what he came up with. What the mind of man can conceive and believe, it can achieve. What you can affirm, what you can visualize, you can actually make happen for good or for bad. 100 years ago, mindset mattered. Now back then, leaders thought that this was squishy stuff. It wasn't tangible enough. They go, give me some meat. Where's the beef, right? Well, fast forward, the leaders of today understand that the soft skills are the hard ones to really master. And man, that is playing out big time today. So at the Pacific Institute, we get all these academic advisors and do all kinds of research to prove that you can actually put your brain under a functional MRI and based on your thinking, it drives new neural pathways. It's called neuroplasticity. You can change the form of your flipping brain and that thinking drives new outcomes, whether for good or for bad. So we actually proved now scientifically that mindset matters. Crazy stuff. Scientifically proven that what you're thinking about right now, you will actually influence whether it's getting through this day in a positive vein or not. And this isn't happy talk. Man, we've trained, I've trained Navy SEALs, uh, uh, Fortune 50 executives in boardrooms to, to locker rooms of extraordinary elite athletes. Mindset matters. Mindset matters. Now I'm going to give you a little assessment on if you think mindset matters. So what I'd like to have you do, please, is envision in your mind the, the quintessential leader, someone in your mind, whether known to you or not, whether dead or alive, whether, whether uh, uh, faith-based or uh, a military warrior, someone in your family, a, uh, um, uh, 
you know, your, your significant other, just, just that leader, someone who's impacted you in a way that's just extraordinary, made you a better person, even in your own mind's eye. And I want you to think of the characteristics of that individual, the very things that you embrace, the very things that you espouse. Share characteristics of the leader that you're embracing in your mind. Compassionate, Compassionate love it. Truthful, love it. Authentic, great. Positive, thank you very much. That's what we're talking about. I see the smile. Trustworthy, fabulous, right on. Sharing, sharing, right? Collaborative, beautiful, from the back, leader. Positive, Positive. good. Brave. Brave, love it. Confident, Confident. beautiful again. Credible, credible. Outgoing, outspoken. Outgoing, outspoken, beautiful. Extroverted, leaders can also be introverted, but love it. A personality that's engaging. Okay. Forward thinking. Forward thinking. Innovative. The horizon beyond the horizon. Absolute blue ocean strategy. Love it. Thank you. Sincere. Sincere. Sincere, genuine, big hearted. Absolutely. Thank you. Passionate. It's what we live. Passion, right? Empathy. Empathy. Firm but fair. Firm but fair. Having those critical conversations, firm but fair. Helping people live up to the promises that they made to themselves. Firm but fair. Thank you. Strong. Strong. Good. Now I want to flip this on its ear. And I want to have you think of that person, that, that individual, that is the quintessential opposite of that person that you were just thinking of. Someone who you really want to not affiliate with. Someone who, to a point you abhor, you really want to distance yourself from. Egotistical. I love it. You, everybody flies on me because you're thinking, I got that person, I got that person, let me answer. But before we do, I want you to think of the characteristics of that individual and do the same as you just shared with me. So, five seconds. Five, four. Two, one. Characteristics of that anti-leader, please. Negative. Selfish. Needy. Plays favorites. Insecure. Insecure, perfect. Narcissistic. Yeah, ego maniacal. My way or the highway. Do it because I told you so. Lazy. Hot-headed, short-tempered, beautiful. Mean-spirited. Mean yeah, it doesn't come at the at this situation with the right spirit of intent. Not giving credit. You're right. Not, not, not impacting others in a way that you hold them in the highest possible regard. Love it. Well, you all passed. You absolutely believe that mindset matters because what you described were habits, attitudes, beliefs, and expectations of that individual, whether leader or not. Nobody said that your leader was smart. Nobody said that your leader had high IQ. Nobody said that your leader had a bunch of, of degrees, more degrees in a thermometer. Nobody said that the antithesis of that leader was, was a dummy or was just, just not smart and didn't go to school and wasn't trained. Mindset is not IQ. It's emotional connection. It's belief quotient. It is habits, attitudes, beliefs, and expectations. Scotoma, real quickly, what is a scotoma? Blind spot. Blind spot, good. Are we gonna get CE for this, by the way? Because they're getting these answers right. Here is the next tweetable quote, your takeaway, worth the price of admission. Remember it forever. 
Haves, haves, haves. Habits, attitudes, beliefs, and expectations. Mindset. And collectively, in your organizations, that's called organizational culture. What lies below the waterline? The, the collective haves of everyone in your funeral home, in your cemetery, in your pre need sales operation. How are you doing with those haves? Yours and theirs. How are you doing with impacting their haves? Real quickly, how much potential, percentage wise, do you all believe we use, we tap into? Percentage wise? 10%. 10%. Thank you. Others? 5 0. Thank you, Robin. 3. 3. I'll bring this little survey to a close. It's 3 to 7%. We got vast potential, this wedge, vast potential, and we've got limited throughput because it all goes through our aims, our limiting beliefs, our holdbacks. I lost my glasses. Man, don't give them that job. They're not hitting their quota. Give that lead to another salesperson. Maybe it's about you as the sales manager. How are you impacting their haves? So I'm going to challenge you to move your haves back just one percentage point. Try to hit 8% or 4% with that range. Just one percentage point. And you will have extraordinary results. And have any of you watched or read the book or watched the, the YouTube video, 212 Degrees? Please, would you mind going mask? Or what, just yell it out through your mask and tell us what that's about, please. 212 Degrees. Going the extra degree. I'm going to help you. That one extra degree. At 211 degrees, water doesn't boil. At 212 degrees, it boils. At 212 degrees, when water boils, it creates steam. Steam drives locomotives. So what are you going to do with your one extra percent? Mindset now. Okay, Pansier, so you've proven that mindset matters. What are we going to do with it? Okay, I believe it, but how am I going to action this, man? Sounds like a lot of happy talk up to this point, even though you proved it scientifically. Um, and it's a century old. And man, you can even back this up. You know, 2,500 years ago, the Bible speaks about these kinds of things. So whether you proved it or not to us, so what? Who cares? What in the heck am I going to do with it? Well, now I'm going to give you the four A's, the four ingredients to success so you can action your new mindset. Ready? The first step in recovery is awareness. Very familiar, or I should say there's, there's a lot of um, uh, lightness to the 12-step process. I'm not endorsing that. But the first step in recovery, whether it's, <laughs> I can't find my glasses, well, don't tell yourself you can't find them. You know that they are somewhere, so just keep searching. And maybe walk by a mirror and realize that they're there. But the first step in recovery is awareness. And so let's go back to the whole scotoma concept. Knowing that we have scotomas, and they're blind to us, I'm going to ask you, where you are working very, very hard and not having breakthrough. Where are, where are you doing your absolute best that you think is your absolute best and you just can't figure it out? Whether it's at home with your family, whether it's in your, uh, your, your funeral service operation, cemetery operation, pre-need operation. Where are you trying very, very hard and you're just not succeeding? That's the corner you need to look around because Scotomas will start to appear. Also, you need to stop thinking you're such a smarty pants like I did back in 2008 and sort of put a bucket of cold water on your head saying, I don't know everything. I need to become a little bit more vulnerable. 
I need to realize that I need to step back and become more genuine with myself and realize that I got more potential that I'm not tapping into. And in that regard, you should rely on a trusted advisor. Now, you got to be careful. You can't be you know, preaching the gospel about all this to just anybody. But who is a trusted advisor that you can sit with and say, you know, I just see three F's here. You see seven. Help me see the seven. So in your operations, even as leaders, you're going to be missing things. But are you willing to be vulnerable to create a culture of authenticity, as you all believe is part of leadership, and talk about, man, I've got the picture of where we're going, but help me get there, because I'm missing something. Okay? And importantly, you got to make sure that you have a replacement picture in your mind for exactly what you want, because when I burned the boats, I was not gonna let my family business go away. So I tapped into my bride, Tiffany, way to the audience, little Tiff, and my son, Mark Anthony, and I said, you're a part of my replacement picture. I am moving down this path because I know that mindset matters. I wanna be able to step up and step out but are you willing to join me on this journey? She was selling diamonds for a living. Get that. She went from diamonds to death. Now she has some fun with that. And I got to share. She learned how to help the dying and the bereaved by learning how to die. Her first husband lost his life to cancer at a very, very young age. And it was through my embracing of that extraordinary story that I said, you are not only an able replacement for me, but you are better than me. I need you to believe that. I did the same with my son in different regards. Fast forward, they just won this award, Best Funeral Home in Hollywood. We won the award in Pepper Pines. They're buying funeral homes, they're doing things, and they're remodeling, and they're doing this and that. But you see the old man sitting in the background, just happy as a pig in slop, just smiling. All I'm doing is carrying their water and, and influencing them in an efficacious way, saying, you can do this. So I uncovered my own belief about I'm the only one who can do this. I created a replacement picture, and then I stepped up and I stepped out. And I'm challenging you all, you all to think of that in the same regard, but it doesn't have to be out of this extraordinary profession. Because remember, I now am a caregiver to the world. How does that translate for all of you? Awareness. Next is acceptance. What in the heck do you want? <laughs> Once you realize that you, what you got, you may want to stretch a little bit, you may want to modify a little bit, you may want to adjust a little bit, you got to define very, very clearly what you want. If you all, Y-O-U, think individually, if you were you, Inc., you are your own company. You individually, forget about your funeral homes, forget about what, what you do, but you, Inc., you are the enterprise. Do you have a clear definition in your brain of your higher purpose, of your why, of your vision, of your North Star? Do you have it clearly identified in your mind? If so, and some of you may, I'd like to hear it, would like to hear it. Awareness to what you want. I'm challenging you, who has a personal why? Beautiful. Stand up and shout it, please. Would you please? To add value to other people's lives. <laughs> Love it. To add value to other people's lives. It's like Ritz Carlton. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, serving ladies and gentlemen, to add value to other people's lives. Who else has identified and defined their higher purpose, their why? I'm not going to talk again unless somebody else talks next. <laughs> Somebody's got to say something. 
Please stand up. Try to push people to be their best. I love it. I'm going to help you with something now. Can you stand up? Okay. Are you okay? I got vaccinated. I got everything. I'll put a max on. Can I touch you? Thank you. God, that was leading. <laughs> Can you put your hand? Would you please put your hand up? Ready? Okay. Ready? Ready? Oh, this gentleman is strong. Thank you. Okay. After you, sit down. Thank you. Round of applause. When I, your first name? Rob. When I put my hand up and I put it against Rob, Rob's, what did Rob do? Louder? Okay. So when pushed, people push back. That's an operative word. So you want to think about nurturing others up to their greatest potential. So I want you to think about your why. I want you to think about how you are even translating this in your own brain. Because when you push your own brain, your brain pushes back. It's called subconscious cognitive dissonance. Man, I don't feel good here. It's my, not my comfort zone. <gasps> I don't want to speak. I don't want, man, I'm going to lose my place. And it'll shut you down. Or you want to go to a networking event? I forget people's names. And oh, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Because you're pushing your brain. And the same thing happens. Same happy talk, man. I got some Navy SEALs that, that, that do a lot of special um, uh, 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 operations around the globe that I can stand up here. And they will recite the very things that I'm sharing with you. This is hardcore stuff. Mindset to skill set. So if you're pushing yourself, what are you doing to your teams? What are you doing to your family? What are you doing to your children? What are you doing to your faith-based community? What are you doing when it comes to your finances? What, is it, what are you doing when it comes to goal setting? What are you doing when it comes to, to the, the operations of your, of, of your operations? When pushed, people push back, including you. But I love the sentiment. It's just about nurturing, giving people the tools to be their best selves. Not happy talk, real stuff. Thank you. I'm going to continue along these lines. So acceptance, what do you want? What do you want? Well, crazy enough, the brain doesn't know the difference between something vividly imagined and the actual experience. Remember I told you about that neuroplasticity, what you're thinking about, I want to, you know, the, this is all cognitive research stuff, but you can think about something, think, 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 drive these neural, the, these synaptic firings in your brain, and all of a sudden it starts to manifest. I already shared that with you. So what picture in your mind are you creating for what you do want or for the vision that you have for your team? Consider on your leader, team leader. And uh, the vision I'm going to express to you is going to be defined in the breed of a dog. Breed of a dog. What breed of a dog are you thinking of now? Golden. A golden. Breed of a dog. Golden Doodle, breed of a dog. Scottish Terrier. Scottish Terrier, one more, breed of a dog. Wattweiler. Wattweiler, okay, beautiful, thank you, okay? Everybody's got different dogs. We got our little Bentley, our little son, four leg, little, little uh, what do you call it? rescue, God bless him. Don't tell my kids, but I just love him so much. <laughs> um, breed of a dog, everybody's got different breeds of dogs. I'm your leader. This is the hill that we're going to charge. Don't yell my vision out. Just start absorbing the picture that I'm painting for you. The breed of the dog that I'm considering, that I'm thinking of, is he's white, male dog, white male dog, um, happy white male dog. I, I see his tail wagging. Oh my gosh, happy white male, about 60 pounds. Happy white male dog, about 60 pounds, tail wagging. Oh my gosh, and I see it so vividly. My gosh, that, that happy white, 
uh, a tail wagging about 60 pound male dog has got black spots and he's sitting next to a fireman on the fire engine. What dog am I describing? Everybody got the same picture. As leaders, we must be Picasso picture painters. Because the mind doesn't know the difference between something vividly imagined, as I just described to you in the Dalmatian, or the actual experience. Okay? So are you painting the picture in your own minds of what you want to accept as, you, as your new normal, as your next normal? Are you thinking about what you're thinking about? Do you see the seven Fs? you see the Dalmatian? Lastly, in this regard, we've got 50 to 70,000 thoughts per day that run through our mind. How many of them, percentage-wise, do you believe are negative? 50. 50%? 70%. 70%? Darn close. 80 to 90 percent are negative. What naturally grows in the garden? Weeds. Weeds. Okay. Are you thinking about what you're thinking about? Because you've got to snap yourself out of that downward spiral of negative thinking. I'm going to give you one more cognitive concept, but a special little story on how I screwed up as a dad. The concept is called teleological. We are teleological beings. We move towards and become like that what we think about. Okay, so what are you thinking about? Again, mindset matters. We move towards and become like that what we think about. Teleological. So at different ages, Mark Anthony is the youngest, and I've got two daughters older, but I taught them all. How many of you taught a, a, a young person to ride a two-wheel bicycle? How many of you had, had that experience? Darn fun, even though I was a little bit nervous doing it, whatever, whatever. So we get out on the, um, uh, on the sidewalk the morning that was set for us to take the training wheels off and get them on there. And I told them how great they were, all positive affirmation. You're going to do a fabulous job, da, 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 da. Good, they're on there. I got the back of the bicycle, and their feet don't touch the ground. But I said, put your, I'm holding it, put your feet on the pedals, and just keep pedaling. Pedal, and because you're going to build your momentum, and you're going to, you're going to do great, and you're going to be able to whiz around the neighborhood fabulous. Okay, ready? Here we go. Slow, 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 faster, faster, pedal, 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 and let it go. And then I said, look out for the rock on the left side of the sidewalk. What the kid do? Exactly. Teleological. They moved towards and became like that what I told them they were about. Think about rock, you're going to get rock. So what are you thinking about? Are you clearly defining the Dalmatian? Are you clearly, clearly defining the seven S? Are you clearly defining, or are you clearly having your teams understand that we're going to move towards the vision of this organization serving the, the good and welfare of our communities? Ladies and gentlemen, Serving, ladies and gentlemen, what is your North Star is it clearly defined? Does everyone see it? Are you Picasso picture painters when it comes to accepting what you really want? I'm challenging you to think about what you're thinking about. Next. Action. Everybody says, pants here, what, man, you gotta, you gotta get after it, man, gotta get after it, go for it, yeah, Nike, let's do it, got it. <laughs> but mindset matters. So, when you're telling your team, okay, we're, we're gonna increase 50% in, in, you know, in sales production, at need, pre-need, we're gonna do this, that, and the other, we're gonna, we're gonna expand the facilities, we're gonna do, da, da, da. man, all of those tactical elements are gonna be, remember the push, push back I shared with you? All of those tactical elements are going to be faced with something that is called cognitive, cognitive, how our brain works, dissonance, pushback. Cognitive dissonance. Best way to describe it is, if my left hand is our comfort zone, and my right hand is the goal, 
Sales expansion, serving more families per year, better customer experience surveys, net promoter scores, uh, making sure that we don't have to call Wendy to keep us out of litigation, uh, of funeral service. That's a terrible plan. You're right. <laughs> I'm thinking about what that. <laughs> Great job. Can you come up and share the mic with me and teach you? Fabulous job. You're right. Um, getting back on track. Goal, current reality. What happens in between? What is that? Got it. Tension. Stress. It's going to happen naturally. And if you don't realize that it's going to happen naturally, what are people going to do? They're going to shrink back down to their comfort zone because it's going to freak them out. And you as leaders have to energize them and have them understand that that is supposed to be there. It's called eustress, euphoric stress. It's a part of a dopamine hit in the brain like a runner's high. It will catapult you to new levels of performance as long as you have the why, higher purpose, North Star defined for all. And, you're, and you are addressing their with them. What's in it for me? Making sure that they're paid appropriately, they're paid on time, they're treated with high positive regard, all those things. But you've got to make sure that you are not creating a fear factor within your organization, false expectations appearing real, F-E-A-R, because people will shrink back down into what's comfortable. And even if they are not declaring it consciously, so like the meeting after the meeting, okay, I agree with Pan Sear in the meeting, but no, the meeting at the water cooler afterwards, there's no, there's no flip away. We're just going to duck and cover. We're going to go back to how we were doing it. Maybe they won't say it that literally, but you will have subconscious sabotage going on, and you will, it'll be bizarre the kinds of things that'll start manifesting within the organization when people start undercutting the very, the very organizational aims that you're looking to achieve. Cognitive dissonance, comfort zones, replacement pictures. Brain doesn't know the difference between something vividly imagined and the actual experience. So being a Picasso as it relates to your higher purpose goals for yourself and the organization. Lastly, achievement. Everybody do this for me. You don't have to stand up, but give me one of these winning Let's go, winning, winning. How's it make you feel? Please tell me a little bit better. I mean, I see smiles on your face. It can be as easy as when you're feeling down, do one of these, put a pen when you're doing. First of all, people will think you're a nut job, but man, you've got a, a CVS pharmacy in your body, and when your cheeks go up, it tells the big guy that I'm happier. Crazy, you can force that. Real science, crazy stuff. So just the act of celebration, even if they are the smallest wins, because there's a theory called proximal goal achievement will lead to distal, long-term goal achievement. So have any of you read the book or listened to the YouTube video from Admiral McRaven uh, when he did the commencement exercise to University of Texas in 2016 about, Robin, what is it? Make your bed every day. And he's talking about changing the world, but you got to start by making your bed every day. Why? Because you can celebrate, celebrate the success of something accomplished well. The brain loves endings and new beginnings, endings and new beginnings, endings and new beginnings. So do little micro goals. Do a little, make your bed every day. Man, I accomplished that. Then go have a good breakfast. And then maybe 30 minutes walking around the block, get a little exercise. Endings and new beginnings, endings and new beginnings, endings and new beginnings. They will catapult you to new levels of performance. And then also, and lastly, you must be grateful. Gratitude is the unyielding fuel for courage to go on. You must be grateful. You must thank whoever, whomever, yourself, the universe, the source, it doesn't matter, for anything that you've achieved, even if it's just making your bed that morning. 
You must be grateful. And especially in this day and age, you must give grace. You must give grace and space. Thank people for their contribution and hold them in the highest possible regard. In conclusion, I know you all are now going to be your own Skatoma Busters. So, in conclusion, as mentioned, I want to quickly survey the audience and ask you what your reflections are on the last 56 minutes that we spent together. What are you going to apply? What's a takeaway that was an aha moment for you that you're going to apply immediately? Reflections on the last 56.5 minutes together. Takeaways. Love it, love it. And you can do that by asking a trusted advisor, um, uh, looking where you've tried very, very hard and you haven't achieved, right? And also where you think that you got all the answers. That's where you're going to be able to find this hotel. It's beautiful. Thank you. Others. Well, big time. Modeling the behavior. It's like a chameleon becoming like that leader. And uh, we've got a 3M mantra at the Institute. It's model, mentor, monitor. And it's incumbent upon us to model the behavior that you want out of others, mentor them up to higher levels of achievement, and monitor them, hold them accountable. Again, you and, you and Wendy next time, I'm telling you, replay. You, you guys are crushing it. Thank you. Perfect. Um, thanks for the choreography, it worked. Others, takeaways. Louder, please. And tell, tell, our, tell the team, please stand up and tell everybody. Please. Celebrating all the little wins. Great, because? Love it, it'll, it'll, it'll go to the next one. The next begin, then the little ones become bigger ones. Make your bed every day and it'll change the world. Fabulous. Others, takeaways. What do what does Habes stand for? Habits, attitudes. H is habits. habits. A is attitudes. attitudes. Beliefs. Beliefs. Expectations. Expectations. And expectancy theory is huge because if you don't expect that you can achieve something, don't even try it because you won't. You won't. You will create your own subconscious. Sabotage, it's called efficacy theory. It's like the efficacy of being a drug. I have a causative power to make something come true. Expectations, vitally important. Thank you, Robin. Please. I share your unrelenting belief in the manifestation. Yes. What I took away from this is everything that I have been uh, culminating and having the team culminate is correct. Because sometimes I have a vision that I believe in and I always try to manifest my beliefs and I get myself at the vibrational level I feel that I need to be on to achieve those, those goals. And sometimes I feel I subconsciously and consciously get everybody on board with these beliefs by sharing my belief in the, in the positive thought manifestation. And um, sometimes I wasn't sure if I was correct or if I if I, if I did it right. It's less about being right or wrong. It's, less, it's more about being genuine on the, That's what I on, on the end goal. And this is the first time in this industry that I've ever heard anyone talk in this fashion. And I believe it's the superior to any. Well, thank you. Thank you. What I want to do, though, what I want to do, though, is make sure that we bring, because I, I want to back everything that came out of my mouth this morning by science. Let's keep it down, though, to where everyone can consume it. Yes. So the vibrations and things, I'm reading a book by Deepak Chopra now. I would never recommend that book. Ever, ever, ever. It's too out there, man. Well, but it all, it all aligns. So, and and when, I, when I talk about the vibrations, I think it's the vibrations are the way you feel. And if you feel negative and you expect positive results, it's, 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 you're not tuned into the, to the right personal feeling to achieve what you want. Right, that's right why, on. That's how 
And the easy way to, to describe that, that, my rubber band, that's snap exactly. yourself out of it. When you're feeling like it's going to be a bad day, snap yourself out of it, get over yourself. Take yourself out of that downward spiral and say, pants here, get on it, man. You want to do the best as a caregiver, you want to caregive it to others. Whether it's the end, end user, client, family, or those that you serve. Thank you so very much. Yeah. You're on the right track. Any others, takeaways? No, I'm going to consider that y'all got them, but we got to conclude. Lastly, what I want to do, I did a TED Talk, and who watches TED Talks? Really cool stuff. And so take a peek at this thing. Please like it and share it. I'm trying to build this mindset movement. But importantly, what I want to do, because of my love for our profession and my love for the association, I want to provide you a free mindset assessment. And then 30 minutes with me going through it to talk about what might be limiting beliefs and where you might have scotomas so you can springboard into your best self. I appreciate all of you. I hold you all, all I hold you all, I hold you all in high positive regard. Blessings. John. Thank you, Mark, for being here today and sharing your experiences with us. Um, at this time, if you'd like to come on up to the stage with me, please. Oh, okay. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. It.